Hi there Paint Shop Pro users, welcome to my site and welcome to this video tutorial. This one, if I can get through it without dogs barking and phones ringing, will demonstrate how to use a soft light layer to do a dodge and burn on an image like this, a black and white or monochrome image. Now this image I took years ago when I was in Phoenix. It was a dark and stormy day in Phoenix, which is an unusual situation. And uh, the sky was really dark up here, really dark. Down here, light. Dark here, brilliant blue sky there, white, white clouds right there. So it was really quite a dramatic day. So I want to try and bring this back to its uh, what it looked like in, in real life. I took the image with a 3.1 megapixel Toshiba PDR-M70 camera. And in its day, it was a really great uh, camera. Now a camera phone probably can do a better job than that. But uh, hey, you know, it was a good picture and the dodge and burn will fix it right up. Now first we're going to take a look at the uh, histogram. And I'll bring it out here so you can see it. Uh, you can see that there's not many uh, pixels in the highlight area. There's a fair amount in the midtones, and that would be all these grays up in there. And the lower end of the high of the uh, midtones, or or the high end of the high of the, the shadows, there's not many pixels either. So it's it's kind of uh, it's missing some information. So we're going to fix that. So let's move this guy out of the way and let us start off. Now of course when we're going to do this with a soft light layer we need a soft light layer, right? So I'm going to make a soft light layer. Cool. New raster layer. Soft light. Okay. Now rather than start wailing away with my pen, I'm using the pen and tablet of course, the Wacom tablet, with black and white, I'm going to do a global change to this image. And this is an image that, that will allow that because it's, it needs to be uniformly darker up here and uniformly lighter down here. And how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to use a gradient. So we're going to go into the materials property, the materials property, and here it is right here, and here are the gradients. Click on that, and if you've been in the gradient tool, you know there's a ton of gradients in PaintShop Pro. Ah, oh, there's a dog barking. Okay, so what we want is a black and white one because with a soft light dodge and burn, black darkens and white lightens. And I want to darken the top and lighten the bottom. So that means I want the gradient to face this way. Now if I take this little spinny thing and roar it around, you can see that it'll change its orientation. Now I want this to be at 180 degrees. And that's almost there. So I'll just back it off one make it 180 exactly. I don't know if that's going to make a difference, but we'll do it. To apply a gradient, you grab the flood fill tool and just tap on the soft light layer in the image. And there we go. Now many of you are probably saying, oh wow, that's beautiful. Don't do any more. Well, it's a little bit dramatic in the top. This, you know, this is almost too black. And you can see over here in the histogram, we now have a yellow bar going straight up to infinity and beyond. And uh, that's called clipping. And that means there's areas that are jet jet black with no detail. And that's not really desirable. So we want to ameliorate that to some degree if we can. And we'll do that by lowering the opacity a little bit. There. Uh, down to around 70. 55. Uh, a bit more up. Okay. So that's taking care of that looks a bit more realistic now, doesn't it? Okay, so now we're going to add a second soft light layer on here. New raster layer. Soft light. Okay. And I want black and white to be my foreground background colors. Obviously these are wrong because there's a gradient and it's red. So you just click on here. I'm tapping with my pen to get black and white. Now I want to start with white. So I'm going to flip that over. Okay, now I need a brush. And these are all my brush settings up here. 19 pixels will just kind of nicely cover this off here. So I'm just, and I've got my opacity set at 52%. Because Paint Shop Pro is not as responsive with pressure as some of the other major digital editing programs. I won't name any names, but it's not quite as responsive. So I have to lower the opacity here. And use this with pen pressure also on the brush variants. If you don't know what I'm talking about, never mind. 
Okay, now I'm just painting with white and just lightening up this area here. So you can see that's a bit better. Now you can actually see some of that exciting, exciting detail in the foreground. And we'll get this bush a bit better. And across the bottom here. I think there was a highway out there somewhere. And, uh, you know, the desert is not terribly exciting. Uh, uh, well, I, I know the desert is exciting, but in, in this image, it's not. It's kind of boring, actually. But we're not looking at the subject matter. We're looking at how we can make this picture look a bit better. Okay, so now that we've got some detail here, you can actually see that there are bushes. And if I go up the side of this tree, we actually get some of the detail back in the tree as well. These are obviously palm trees. So if I go up into these frondy things and try it, nah, we're not getting anything. It's just too black up there. And maybe that's where this clipping comes from. Okay, so next thing to do is to go over to black. Now I'm going to make the brush a bit bigger, pressing the Alt key, put my pen on the tablet and drag it down to make it a bit bigger. Now this is going to slow everything way down on my computer, but what the heck. So I'm just going to come across here and give it some burning there. So that's what I'm doing now is burning. And I'm going to burn in that cloud and down here in the foreground. Well, the foreground clouds, the bottom clouds. And now you can see some of these details right in this area here starting to show up. So it's starting to look a bit more dramatic, isn't it? The original picture proves that oh, it doesn't take an awful lot of skill to take a really, really bad picture. And uh, I am living proof of that. Okay, now I'm going to make the, the uh, brush a bit smaller. Now this was really dark, uh, or not dark, but it was really brilliant blue. So I'm going to try and darken that up without going into the clouds too much. There we go. And I suspect if I change the opacity, it'll uh, it'll look even a bit more dramatic. There. And I'm going to work this this cloud a little bit too, see if I can bring in the details. Let's add a bit more opacity here. I'm probably going to wish I hadn't done this. Okay. Maybe we're getting a bit more. Because that, that was quite dramatic, that blue sky. And I went over the edge there, sadly. And we'll come back in here to this cloud. There we go. Okay, now let's take a look at the histogram. Now that is a difference, isn't it? We got it more of a balanced histogram. It's not perfectly balanced, but that doesn't matter. It just is, is better. The picture is better. And you choose that for yourself. It's all very subjective, isn't it? So that's how you use a soft light layer to burn in a black and white or monochrome image. Now, if I wanted to make this really, really, really good, I'd spend a lot more time than eight and a half minutes doing it. But uh, you get the technique. Now you take it off and you take the technique and you do what you can with it in your own images because it really does work well. So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you found it useful and I'm sure you'll find a place to, uh, to use it, especially if you love black and white images like I do. So thanks for watching. I appreciate your time and your attention. And uh, if you came in through YouTube, pay a visit to my site sometime. The uh, address is up here. And uh, I'd love to see you on my site. So take care. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.